Hello, everybody. This is Brother Chooch for Thinking Out Loud about the End Times. This is Night Watch, a nighttime fellowship for those who are waiting for the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to pull us out of this political puppet show and into the clouds where we will see him face to face and be changed. And then he will take us to the place that he's been preparing for us for about 2,000 years. Thus, we'll be with the Lord forevermore. He is our blessed hope. We're excited. We are excited. 2024, right? So as we get closer to that day, we cannot help but look up because we know that our only hope is in Jesus. So why don't we put our hope in other things? After all, the rest of the world is doing that. And you have that right to do that. You could put your hope in your career. You could put your hope in your political party. You could put your hope in your religion. You could put your hope even on your own aptitude and intelligence and abilities. But I would encourage you to put your hope in Jesus. I know of no other who can... Um, save and rescue as our great Lord and Savior. If you're able to see the condition the world is in, you will know that you need a Savior. We need to understand the importance of the salvation that's been offered to us. Whether you believe that the end is near or you believe that it's way down the road, at some point, you have to face God. You have to give an account for your sins. And the only way for your sins to be paid in full has already been done in the work of Christ on the cross of Calvary when the Son of God laid down his life and shed his precious blood so that we might be justified before God and that our sins may be paid for, past, present, and future. He was, he died, was buried, and he rose again. He validated everything that he said about himself, what he would do, performed it perfectly by the power of God. He rose again, and he is coming back. If you place your faith in Christ and Christ alone, my friend, you are saved. You are sealed to the day of Christ Jesus. That means that you belong to him, and when he comes on the day of the rapture, which will be shortly before the tribulation period, uh, he will take you home, like we talk about in the beginning of each of our programs. So, I am not in my usual place. I am uh, in a place that's a little bit colder. That's why I'm dressed this way. My mother... Uh, used to crochet. Would this be called an afghan? It's like a, a big blanket. And it's very comfortable, but moreover, it's um, when she was on earth, she would make this for those that she loved. And she made, she'd made me several of these. Um, so I know my mother right now is with the Lord in heaven, but I'm very thankful for her. So she was a very loving mother, a very sacrificial mother. And I don't know if I would have found Jesus uh, if the Lord didn't use my mom. My mom bought me a Bible, and uh, I read it. I grew up Catholic, right? So... I think we had a big white family Bible that was never read, was somewhere in the house. I think it had our baptism dates on it when we were babies and maybe was pressing a flower or two or um, a colorful leaf. Uh, but I don't think we read it. So my mom bought me the Bible when I was 
I want to say 15, 14 or 15. And I started reading through it. And then when I got to the New Testament, I started seeing, wait a second. It seems to be talking a lot about faith and grace. And I saw a lot of contradictions between what I was taught as a Catholic and what the Bible was telling me. So to make a long story short, I got saved. I left the Catholic Church. And I tried finding a Bible-believing church. But I'm thankful for my mom, Mama Chooch, who gave me a Bible to read. That's one of the best gifts that a parent could give their son or daughter is a Bible. There's something special about that book, right? So tonight, I have mixed emotions. I really do. I have mixed emotions when we're talking about the end time because it's been such a journey. And as we get closer to the end, I want, well, let me just answer this because I see this in the um, the chat. Do Catholics, don't Catholics believe everyone go to, go to heaven? Um, no, I don't think Catholics believe that. But let me say this before we, we leave because I don't want to condemn uh, all Catholics. Now, the doctrine of Catholicism, um, I believe, is not a true gospel. But there are Catholic people who believe, who remain in the church for whatever reasons. I'm not condoning that, but there are believing Catholics who know the gospel, who believe the gospel. Um, I would probably encourage you to consider going to a place that teaches Solo, sola scriptura, only scripture, only the word. And not because the Catholic Church basically teaches that the papacy um, has as much, even more authority than the word. And that's a, that's a big problem. Okay. So, I don't want this to be bash Roman Catholic uh, episode. I want this to be an encouragement to all believers. And if you are a Catholic and you have questions, please email me. Did you know I met with a priest in high school? I was considering being a priest at one point. Could you imagine? Because I was searching, I was I, I I was interested in the Lord, and the Lord saved me before I, I went that route. And so here I am. I'm not Father Chooch. I'm Brother Chooch instead, and I'm happy I'm Brother Chooch. But anyways, um, what I was saying about where we are in 2024, you you have to understand something that. When you've been watching for the rapture, as long as I have, and I go back to 1986, I've had this YouTube channel since 2016. It is, um, to me, it's it's been a marathon. And this marathon is special because I have been terrifically, terrifically affected by um, the rapture most of my believing life. And it has been an encouragement and has helped me. Um, I've also made some not so good decisions because I've kicked the can down the road and I still can continue to kick the can down the road on certain things because I'm awaiting the rapture, right? And I 
would advise you even today not to do some of the things I did. Now, I never sold my home. I never sold the farm. I never, um, you know, joined a commune on top of a mountain waiting for a specific day when the rapture would take place. Nothing that severe. But I've done some things where I've been a bit myopic, thinking that um, the Lord is coming back. I, I think the Lord's coming back in a, in a year or two. So for me to say right now, I'm excited about 2024, almost sounds, um, it sounds familiar. However, we have to look at the whole time of traveling. Um, and me specifically, having wait, waited that long, um, you get you get a bit leery, but you know you're getting to that place that you've been waiting for. And there's something uh, special about that because as tired as I am, there still is excitement and anticipation. And when I say, could this be the year? I really mean that. Could this be the year? But I'm at a point right now where if... It wasn't 2024. You're going to see more than likely, by God's grace, um, me maybe going from my second chin to my third chin and a little bit more gray in my beard and maybe uh, a little bit more um, aged in my face. But I expect to be in 2025 or 2025, 2026, still doing it because this is not, uh, this is a lifelong endeavor for me. This is a lifelong waiting for me. So I'm, I'm in it and I'm in it till the end. I'm in it to the end. So 2024 is a special year for me. And I have reasons for that. I'm not just saying that. I, I, I'm saying it because I have eyes, I have a brain, I have a Bible. Okay? And my eyes are showing me the things that I've been waiting for are coming to be. For example... Was I waiting? Let's take 2017 because that's that was a year I was like on high alert. Uh, I thought that very well could be the year because of the Revelation 12 sign. And the world wasn't in great shape in 2017. Here we are in 2024. So the sign that I thought that was pointing to the rapture in 20, 2017 uh, if you told me this back in 2017, even if I told myself this in 2017, I probably would have slapped myself. I don't want to hear that. This Revelation 12 sign is not a sign that the rapture is in 2017, but it's pointing to seven years from now. Now, I would not have liked to hear, hear that. In 2017, there was a sign. There was a couple signs the Revelation 12 sign, and also there was the great American solar eclipse, the first passing. And then after 2017, a lot happened, didn't it? We had a pandemic. We had uh, more volatility happen in the world. We had Israel now in a war. We have red heifers that are very close to being sacrificed and of age. We have Israel perhaps on the doorstep of having a war with the other proxies of Iran and maybe Iran themselves. And the timetable is a bit different because if you look at the cross, the years that Jesus 
would probably be the most likely uh, the time that he would have been crucified. 30 AD, 31 AD, 32 AD, or 33 AD. I think those that's the big four. If you look at those four possible dates of the crucifixion, and you go ahead 2,000 years, and then you minus it by seven, you would have these years, 2023, 2024, 2025, and 2026. Now, in 2017, even though in the back of my mind I I might have known this, um, wasn't in that zone for that. And because the cross is arguably, I don't even think arguably, I think the most significant event in the history of man that wouldn't God use that cross, the date of the cross, as a time marker of when he will actually um, come back and return. And I, I think, I think, I think the answer to that question would be yes. So now in 2024, we have that. We're in that bang zone for 2,000 years past the cross minus seven for the tribulation period, certainly in 2024. Now you could say, well, brother, chooch. Wouldn't it be 2025 and 2026 if you take uh, 32 or 33 AD into account? Yeah, but we're still in the zone. 2017, we weren't. And certainly back in 1986 when I started, when I first found out about the rapture, certainly not then. What about the fig tree generation? Well, the fig tree generation was definitely in play in 2017. If you do the math, right, is the fig tree generation in play in 2024? You betcha. And it's actually even further along. So when I say um, World War II veterans, is there anyone here with the raising of a thumb or a hand in the chat? Is there anyone here who knows of a living veteran of World War II. Please let me know if you do. Now, they're going to be older for sure. All right, so... Helmsman does. Rima Hardy does. So that's two... Uh, LaDonna Davis does. So I'm asking if you know a World War II veteran. Uh, doesn't have to be a relative. You just know of one that's alive. Let me know. So far, I think three people said they do. Robin says my brother, so that'd be four. So it's it's not that many people. Not that many people. Um, some people know of a... Heisman knows of one that's almost 100 years old. All right, there's a few more. One woman here is 102. Yes, one woman here. Wow, okay. Now, let me ask this question, guys. Here's a new question, all right? You know, I'm going to make this one. I'm going to make this one. Um, could I do that? Survey. Yeah, I could do a poll. All right. Um, I know someone who is a veteran of World War. I'm going to do World War II. Let me put that down there. If you don't mind answering that for me. Yes or no? I know someone who is a veteran of World War II. 
and I'm I'm talking about I should have wrote down uh, alive, uh, alive, not one who passed ten years ago or so. I know a veteran of World War II. And who remembers the year that World War II ended? Who was the year? 1945, 1946, 1945, 1945. So that means if World War II ended in 1945 and they were fighting, you know, the years prior to that, if they were 18, 19, 20 years old in, in 1945, they'd be quite, quite old quite old now, right? All right, so according to this poll, let me see what it looks like here. All right, so this was a quick little poll. Uh, 248 votes. 79% of you do not know a veteran of World War II. And 20% of you do know a, a veteran of World War II. Okay, now one more poll. I'm not guarantee you uh, that you won't get more polls later, but for now, um, I'm trying to make a point. All right, here's another question. Now, do you know anyone who is still alive that is a veteran of World oh, World War One? One, not two, one. All right, answer that, please. Do you know anyone who is still alive that is a veteran of World War I? And does anyone know when World War I ended? When did World War I end? I'm going to, if you guys are history buffs, there's got to be a history buff out there that knows this. 1918, 1917, 1918, 1918, 1919, 1919. Okay. Long time ago. World War I is, has ended, started in 1914, ended in 1918. You're talking well over 100 years ago, right? I don't think anyone would know, but there's there might be one Weisenheimer here that voted that they do. So unless your friend's like 120 years old, maybe 130 years old, I doubt it. All right, so he's got 284 votes here. 98% of you said no. 1% said yes. And the, the person who did say yes or it's possible that two people said yes. Um, how old's that person? Or did you make a mistake in in your vote? Okay. So if if I were to say to you, um, that the rapture won't happen until, how should I phrase it? The rapture will happen before the World War II generation passes. The rapture will happen before the World War II generation passes. If I were to say that, can you say oh world war ii generation passed uh no rapture that's that's incorrect you can't say that because even though the majority of world war ii veterans are gone there's still a small percentage that are alive and somebody wrote here bernie 
Oliva said the last vet of World War World War One died in 2011. All right, so that that goes to show you. Now, so if if I were to say the rapture will happen before the generation of World War One passes, now that would be a false statement. Because the generation of, I think it's safe to say, the generation of World War I has passed. All right? So when the Bible says all these things will come to pass before this generation passes away, if we're understanding it correct, of when Israel was reborn as a nation in 1948, we cannot say. We cannot say that that generation has passed yet. Now, that generation's not young. And because the Lord has a sense of humor, he gives me a mother-in-law that was born in, you guessed it, 1948. Now, she's not Jewish, but she was born in 1948. And I know that she is going to be 76 years old this year. And Israel, I believe, is going to be 76 years old this year. So add seven years to 76, and what do you get? And why am I saying add seven years? Because doesn't the scripture say all these things will be fulfilled. What what are the things that he was referring to? All the things of the tribulation period as stated in the Olivet Discourse, which would even include his return. So you're talking 83 years old. There will be, <clears throat> excuse me, there will be people in that generation who will still be alive. Now, if we if we get to, let's say, the year 2040, uh, 2048 would be 100 years, that'd be pushing it. I'm not saying there won't be one loan. And I'm not sure when the Lord said that he, he meant that, that there's going to be just one anomaly. Um. Jewish person that was born, let's say, in 1948, and they're still kicking in 2048. Um, I, I, I'm just not thinking the Lord's saying it in that way. I think he's saying um, that the gener that generation will still be going. Now, it could mean a majority of them have been pa have passed, so as each year passes, that generation does not get larger, can't. It dwindles because there are more and more people dying off. And so here we are. Israel's about to turn, what, 76? Will they get to 77 before the tribulation starts? Will it... Or, or perhaps, perhaps it'll be this year, right? So 2024, when you think about it, um, it's pretty significant. Now, you know that guy, what's his name, Russ? And he's new news or something like that. He's a nice guy. Russ from New News. Does anyone subscribe to it? Ross? Is it Ross or Russ? Ross. Okay. Um, do you guys like Russ? Do you like Russ? I could picture being friends with him, right? Now, Ross from New News basically focuses in on what's going on in the news in Israel, and if it connects to Scripture. Now, Ross, when I listened to Ross the other day, he said he called what was going on a biblical war. 
And when he said that, that resonated with me. Ross called the current war that's going on a biblical war. And I'm certain he believes that this is going to um, evolve into Psalm 83 war. I think he feels quite confident like that. Now, I can't say 100% that that's the case. And I have to be careful here because I was already wrong in 2020 when I said that I did not believe that the buggy thing that was going on would pass until the tribulation period started. So I'm, I already got, uh, I got plenty of strikes in my past, but that was, that was a strike. I, I think I even made a video. I just can't see the buggy thing passing until I thought that was going to usher in um, the tribulation. So I was wrong. And so take this with a grain of salt because, you know, if you have somebody who's a uh, bats for a low average, you know, you're not going to take what they have to say to the bank. So I'm, I'm warning you, you know, what everything that comes out of this mouth um, is not accurate unless it's quoting scripture. But anyways, I would have a hard time imagining that this war is going to end in Gaza and Israel's going to go back to normalcy and Hezbollah is going to die down and Iran's going to be fine and so on and so forth. And, and this altercation, this just becomes um, sort of like the Yom Kippur War. Very significant. Um, may, makes it its mark in history. I think Bro Tyler's on, bro. Bro Tyler's, he doesn't have to deal with cold weather, so he probably doesn't have one of these. He's probably got um cowboy jacket on or something. But what do you guys think about this? This let me let me put this up. This might be a decent poll question. Would you categorize the Gaza conflict as a biblical war. Would you categorize this Gaza conflict right now as a biblical war? Or would you categorize it more um, along the lines of it's it's yeah it's it's a war it's a conflict i'm not necessarily seeing the connection with psalm 83 or this leading into something like ezekiel 38 or 39 anything like that so let's let's say russ is right ross let's say ross is right if Ross is right and this blooms into Psalm 83, um, I would think that Isaiah 17 is going to be fulfilled. I also see Ezekiel 38 and 39 not too much past that. But more importantly, the whole the whole thing of looking at when they say peace and safety. Sudden destruction comes and they will not escape. Um, could it be? Could it be that this is the stage that is being set? After all this goes down, that the covenant with many 
will be signed. Will be signed. Now, if this all happens, and we just talked about some other things that are pointing to 2024, we have signs, I believe, from 2017 that were pointing seven years in advance. We have, like I talked about, how the timing of the two days after the cross are 2,000 years minus by uh, seven-year tribulation. Are We're in the bang zone for that. We're in the fig tree generation from 1948 bang zone. Um, the stage is set for a major conflict to mushroom cloud in the Middle East to become a uh, multi-front conflict and war for Israel. And the stage is set for the world to want peace and security and this war to end. And so the man of the hour comes seemingly at the right time and offers peace to Israel, offers peace to that region. You also have, <laughs> just so happen to have, the Temple Institute so excited and keen about getting one of these red heifers sacrificed that they have you seen the picture of the of the ramp leading up to um a type of altar i mean talking about ready to go i mean why would they erect that unless they plan on sacrificing a red heifer. So if the Lord, if the Lord is giving us all these hints, should we not be excited about the possibility of it being maybe this year? But bro, Chooch, you just said you've been waiting since 1986. Yeah, that's true. Bro, Chooch, you said in 2017 you thought the rapture would be. Yeah, that's true. And I thought it might be in 2018 and 2019. And probably 2020 and 2021 and 2022 and 2023. Well, isn't that crying wolf, wolf bro, Chooch? Well, I wouldn't call myself Chicken Little. But... There's nothing that I'm seeing that's making me want to stand down and stop. And so I, I really enjoyed what um, I'm really bad with names. How can I forget Dr. Awe, right? I like what he said about being overzealous. And I mean, Dr. Awe is about as zealous a person as you could find. And I, I love what bro Tyler just wrote here. Guess who saw the wolf first? The boy, because he was always looking. Good point. That's an excellent point. We might be guilty of being overzealous. And I'm sure at the Bema Seat Judgment, I'm not looking forward to what the Lord might say to me about my uh, maybe misguided zeal for Christ's return in former years. Because my goal... <clears throat> And my goal is to encourage the body to that day. And I know that I probably have failed quite a bit in that. And I apologize if I've hurt anybody or misguided anybody, because that is not my true heart, and that's not my intention. My intention is the opposite. I want to encourage you, because when I encourage you selfishly, I get encouraged. And I want to finish strong. 
And I want to finish strong holding. I think it would be beautiful if in a spiritual sense, we're all holding each other's hands as we cross the finish line together, half exhausted and the other half rejoicing and being thankful beyond words that can describe how we feel. And we got uh, almost 1,300 people on tonight. And I, I don't know if, if all 1,284 of you are saved or not. Um, there's a good percentage of you that might not believe in the rapture. There might be some of you that don't even believe in Jesus. Maybe some of you are on tonight to mock or to troll or to pity. Maybe some of you are just curious. What are these people talking about? But I would say a fair number of you, probably the majority, are true believers in the Lord Jesus Christ who understand the scriptures to say that Jesus is our blessed hope. That could be coming at any time that embraces the doctrine of imminency. In, uh, I'm, I'm pronouncing it wrong. Imminency. He could come back at any minute. Now, I'm not going to get into a debate with, um, you know, whether you're post-trib or pre-trib or anything like that, because if you are a post-trib, you are not, you do not embrace that the Lord's return is imminent because you would have to actually be looking for things like the Antichrist for the abomination that causes desolation. And it's not imminent. But for the pre-trib, it is imminent because there's nothing that has to be fulfilled before he returns. And just like Pastor Andy Wood said, I can't think of any problem that I have that the rapture can't solve. I like that. But it's not that why we talk about the rapture. And it's not the rapture itself that we talk about because some people will say, um, Bro Chooch, you're just leading a rapture cult. And I'm like, no. Why are you so crazy about the rapture? That's all you talk about is the rapture. Why don't you talk about the gospel? Um, we do talk about the gospel. Matter of fact, almost every video that we have has the gospel in it, if you're, li if you're listening. So even if you disagree with the rapture, people are hearing the gospel. Here's the thing. <clears throat> it's not the rapture we worship. It's the one who's coming in the rapture that we worship. Is the bride is the bride really excited about only the wedding day or who she's marrying on the wedding day? Right? I mean, if Jesus I mean, if the scripture said Jesus wasn't coming in the sky to get us and it's not it's not called Harpazo. If he's, if he's going to come by another means and it's called another word, then we would use that word and look for that other means. But it says he's coming. And he's coming in the clouds. And we're going to meet him in the clouds. And we call it rapture. 
but rapture's not in the Bible, wrote you. Well, neither is Trinity. Now, if you got the Latin ver version of the Bible, then you have rapturos in there. But the word's harpazo. If you rather call it harpazo, call it the harpazo. But here's the thing, is that Jesus said he was going a way to prepare a place for us so that he can come back and receive us and then to bring us to that place. Folks, it doesn't take that much intelligence to understand that concept. He goes to his father's house to prepare a place. In my father's house are many mansions, are many rooms, are many dwelling places, however you want to interpret that. And I go to prepare a place, right? So he goes, he prepares the place, and then he comes back for us to receive us to him, and then he takes us to that place. Now, in order for him to fulfill that, he has to do what he says he's going to do. If we were going to go in the clouds, and then he's just going to bring us right back down at the second coming and then establish his kingdom on earth, it doesn't seem to fit, does it? Especially, don't you want to spend time with your bride? Could you, I mean, think about this. He's king. He's going to be reigning as king, right? So he's going to get his bridegroom and then establish his reign and start reigning. So could you imagine me marrying my wife? And as soon as we're married, I go back to work. No honeymoon. No time together. I'm too busy. I got to do my. I got to do my job. I find it interesting that in the Galilean wedding, in the Galilean wedding, it lasts for seven days, and it, it has the same picture. The bridegroom, after um, his family and her family, the bride's family, um, they have that cup of covenant, that's wine, and they, the husband and the wife will not drink of that wine until their wedding day. That he goes to prepare a place in his father's house for his bride and comes back in about a year. And the bridegroom doesn't know the day or the hour. He, she knows the general time and she has a robe waiting. And could you imagine her saying, I know he said he's coming back. It's been over a year now. I expected him to be here by now. Maybe he has cold feet and he doesn't care, or he forgot about me, or the wedding's off. I think I'll stop waiting. Well, sure enough, one night, it's called the abduction. One night, she hears a trumpet blast. She hears a shout. The wedding party meets her outside of her home. She grabs her wedding dress, jumps in it, meets the bridegroom, not in her house, but in front of her house, and she's carried off by the wedding party, led by the groom to his chambers, and the wedding will be consummated. And then they celebrate for seven days, and they'll be together for the rest of their lives. Now, that's exciting. And so as we look at all of this together, 
and we look at 2024, is it okay to say, you know what? He could come back this year. And by golly, if if he's if he doesn't, it's okay. But we're going to continue to watch and we're going to continue to hope. And if we're called a fool because of it, then call me a fool. It's okay. I love him. And you love him. And we want him. We want to be with him. He's the only true hope I see in this world. Why would I not want to be with the one who laid down his life for me? Well, Brother Chooch, there's so much to to be done here on this earth. There's so many people who haven't heard the gospel yet. There's there's ministry that needs to be there. Yeah, I know that. I know that. Listen, I'm not hiding under a couch waiting for him to come back doing nothing. I could watch, I could long for, and I could hope and be about his business at the same time. I find it interesting that people who mock us or ridicule us by, why don't you go out there and and share the gospel and do this or do that? Wouldn't you be using your time so much better? Well, let me tell you something. I can only speak for myself. Seeing what I see and knowing what I know and understanding the urgency of the time, this actually gives me more energy, more excitement, more urgency to go about and do his work. Why do you think TOL came about in the first place? Because it's about his return, and it's about sharing the word. It's about encouraging the saints as he draws near. Why not? Hebrews chapter 10, starting at verse 24. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works. Not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Wow. Let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works. So brothers and sisters, yes, encourage one another up. To love and good works. And meet together. Does this count for meeting together? Why not? Are you encouraged by being able to chat with each other and listen to what's being presented? I hope so. And it says to do this even the more as you see the day drawing near. Now, why would he say to believers, as you see the day drawing near, unless you had the ability to see the day drawing near? Why would other believers insult or mock us when we keep saying, he's coming back soon, he's coming back soon, he's coming back soon, we know the day's drawing near, And we get told, you don't know when he's coming back. Yeah, we don't know when he's coming back, but the day is drawing near. We know that. The Bible says we know that. So the Bible says we'll know the season and we'll see the day drawing near. It doesn't say that we're ostriches with our head in the sand. And I'm not saying that as a slight to those who scoff and mock. So if you want to use that verse, no man knows the day or the hour. Yeah, okay. If you want if you want to apply it to the rapture, which I don't think it's about, but if you want to apply it to the rapture, granted. Okay. 
No one here knows the day or the hour. But I might anticipate what year it is. And if that bothers you, then humor me. And why do you like playing with that toy, little boy? Well, I like it. Do you want to play with this toy? No, I like this one. That's okay. You could have the helicopter. I like the fire truck. Humor me. Are you a bit obsessed over this? Yeah, I am. So it's it's okay to be consumed with the stock market or a sports team or TV series or Netflix or talking about Jesus is not okay. Right? Painting your your face and going to a football game and smashing through a table, getting inebriated in five degree weather. That's that's okay. Talking about arguably the most fantastic supernatural event to take place since the resurrection of the Savior, that's something that shouldn't be talked about. And sadly, sadly, not to be talked in a lot of churches today. Why? I think it's sad, whatever the reason is. So yes, I am excited about Jesus coming back. Yes, I'm a rapture head. Yes, I'm going to continue, Lord willing, to keep talking about his return. When it might happen, I'm looking at 2024. Until it's not 2024. And guess what? If we're in heaven and we're with the Lord in 2024, uh, come visit me. Stop by my house. Stop by my dwelling. I'll stop by your dwelling. And let's talk about if we still understand it, let's talk about was it worth it or not. And I have a feeling you're going to say it was, and I'm, I'm going to feel the same way. Listen, waiting and watching is not always easy. It's not a science. I don't, I don't quite get it. I still can't believe, I still can't believe it's 2024, but it is. And I know this, uh, going back to that year, 2017, when I thought it was going to be the rapture, and it wasn't. I'm seven years, you are seven years closer than you were back then. And some of you weren't even saved in 2017. How many of you were not even saved in 2017? And it asked that as a poll question. By the way, about 84% of you said that you believe that the Gaza war is a biblical war. Were you saved already by 2017? Because you know, if it was up to me, if you weren't even saved by 2017... Um, so far there's about 20% of you have not been saved yet. So about 20% of you weren't even saved by 2017. Do you know if it was up to me, you'd be in the tribulation period? Matter of fact, uh, if the tribulation period started in 2017, this fall would be the second coming. Just saying you'd probably be martyred if it was up to me. I mean, you, you may have had a chance to get saved during the tribulation period, but I would have, if there was a red button in front of me in 2017, I would have hit it like it was family feud. I would have hit it so quick. 
you'd see a blur. So you see how gracious God is for those 20% right now. So that 20% of three, almost 300 people is about, is that 60 people? I'm sure those 60 people appreciate the Lord's patience. And this is just what? This is a tiny poll. Tiny. But for the sake of those 60 people, God showed grace and allowed you to have that time to get saved. So I'm thankful the Lord waited. Now, let me, those, <laughs> I know you're not going to like this, but um, I know you're not going to like this, and I don't, I don't think it's going to happen, but would you wait, would you be willing to wait five more years if need be? If the Lord wanted wanted us to do that, so more could get saved. And I know it's it's a tricky question because you could say, "Well, Brother Chooch, yeah, you know, yeah." As time goes on, more people are getting saved, but aren't more people getting lost as well? Maybe that might be the case. It probably is. Uh, we do know this. We don't know God's perfect timing. But God's perfect timing is perfect. And when it happens, it happens, we know that God's perfect timing to get his bride was not 2017. Praise God. It wasn't 2018, 2019, or even 2023. We're trying to find out if it's 2024. All we know is that the Lord's timing to get the church was not January or February or the first week of March of 2024. So let's see what he has planned for March. And if we're still here, we'll see what the Lord has planned for April and so on and so forth. But keep running. Don't let up. You're not alone. You're not alone. If you need prayer, you could always email T-O-L prayer warriors at gmail.com. I'm going to put that down there. If you need prayer... You just simply write an email to TOL Prayer Warriors at gmail.com. Isn't that nice? And somebody will pray for you. They'll go back to you and they'll pray for you. I'll pin it on top there if you want to write that down. If you're interested in spreading the gospel online, you could go to tolministries.com and join a group of people who are reaching out right on the internet virtually with the gospel of Jesus Christ, tolministries.com. And there's a YouTube channel with um, some good brothers and sister, uh, I think it's Brother... Brother Mike, Brother Chris, Brother Sister Amara, Amira, and they have started making videos. So you could sub to them. Uh, that would be nice. I'm sure they would enjoy you joining their channel. So anyways, there's a lot of stuff. TOL Prayer Relay, once a month we have that to pray for a specific topic for the month. So there's, there's things here you could do. Now, let me just see what our final tally is here. We have, where's the results? Here it is. 386 votes. 81% of you were already saved by 2017. 18% of you were not. So that's a good number. That's a good number of you who got saved after 2017. Anyways, thanks for tuning in tonight. Enjoy the fellowship. I enjoyed 
hearing, uh, listening, reading your comments. I enjoyed being able to share my thoughts with you. Uh, keep praying. I hope, I really hope this is the year. And that's why I say, hope to see you here, there, but especially in the year. God bless.